I first see myself as a beaming, apple-cheeked toddler sitting on my grandmother's lap, then as an excited youngster visiting the sound stages of MGM Studios with my film editor father, and as a uniformed schoolgirl enduring the rules and authority figures in parochial schools. Later, I see myself as a teenager living for Saturday art classes, where my talents were nurtured by an inspiring teacher and artist. Each decade after that seemed to have its own personal theme and flavor. The fifties were a time for completing college and a degree in art. For me, the sixties were about marriage, family, and artistic achievement— on the larger level, they were also about human rights, and I helped fight Johnson's War on Poverty as a Head Start director. By the decade's end, the women's movement was fully launched. Like many of my sisters, I was juggling a number of roles, i.e. wife, mother, artist, and educator. Then, one day, the bottom dropped out as the 70s began. It was to become a decade of personal crises— the breakup of my marriage and business partnership, the end of my parents' marriage, confrontation with a life-threatening disease, and a radical career and lifestyle change. When my ten-year marriage ended abruptly in January of 1970, I was totally unprepared. My fast-paced life had left precious little time for listening to the vulnerable child within my own heart. Success had pulled me outward, a public life is hard on the inner child, the feeling part of us that needs nurturing, that loves to play and explore, that loves naps, and that thrives on simply being instead of achieving. Within three years of my divorce, the pressures of professional work and single parenting threw me into a severe health crisis, a life-threatening disease affecting the collagen or connective tissue in the body. After a long series of mishaps at the medical clinic where I was receiving treatment, I went in search of an alternative approach to healing. Without realizing it, I had the most powerful healing tool right under my own nose. While writing and drawing in a personal journal that I had started keeping at the beginning of the illness, I realized that journaling my feelings was actually helping me feel better, physically and emotionally. That discovery was destined eventually to lead me into a new career as an art therapist and author. However, at the time I began keeping a journal, I was simply struggling for my own survival. The insights I gained from this profoundly personal form of writing and drawing prompted me to seek therapy. It was in therapy that I first became conscious of my inner child, the vulnerable, feeling, spontaneous, creative self that was crying out to be heard. Imprisoned in my grown-up persona, she wanted out. The only way she could attract my attention was through an illness that forced me to go inside and listen to her needs. Through gestalt role-playing in therapy and journal writing and drawing done with both hands, I came to know this very real child who lives within me. She lives in my body, in my feelings and intuition, and she has brought me understanding and a new life.' 